Hey guys, hi. Good morning. Brent Abel here, Web Tennis. We've got another doubles point here from uh, a National 60s uh, hard court uh, double semifinal down at the uh, Mission Hills Country Club in Rancho Mirage, California. And the combatants, uh, if you haven't seen the prior videos that I did from this match, uh, uh, this is the legendary Brian Chaney, uh, the equal legendary Phil Landauer. We've got Paul Wolf over here, and his partner is Bill Matthews. And this point really is, is, is such a great point because there's so much going on. Uh, as you've already seen, there are a number of different uh, uh, shots that are played, lots of different court positioning. And, um, you know, the one, the one thing I want you to look at, I mean, I can't, I can't find too much to really pick apart in this uh, point. One thing that I like here is, um, and this is this is actually a first serve uh, from Brian, and 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 Paul takes it pretty early, which doesn't give uh, Brian's partner Phil a lot of opportunity to poach. You know, I mean, you can see where where Paul is here, uh, pretty darn, you know, close inside the baseline there. And one of the great things I like about this is his partner Bill recognizes early that this is going to be a tough low ball cross court down low to Brian's feet. And uh, sure enough, Bill closes up here, really gets in a good position and, and forces Brian uh, with a you know really tricky shot here that uh, you know Brian handles. And now um, you know we've got these guys, the receiving team, in really good court position. Paul with uh, a good shot, and and now really the only shot that Brian's got is to lob. And, uh, you know, the reason this guy's a legend is because, uh, you know, I, I think this happens a lot where, where we come in, we serve, we play a, a tough little, you know, transitional shot here that kind of stands us up. We really can't get through it. And now all of a sudden we've got to play a ball from no man's land. And, um, you know, the reason Brian is one of the great all-time senior players is because he's calm right here. He's not panicking. He's kind of figuring out right now, well, what do I really have available? Um, he's in too close. This ball is down too low to really drive it anywhere. It's not really an opportunity to drive it up the alley, even though that might look like it's open. You know, I, I've seen and I played with this guy uh, enough to know that he could also play a little slice over here but you know what? His shoulders just aren't turned uh, enough to be able to do that. So he takes his time and just feathers a lob. And what does he do? I, I mean, first thing he does is he probably checks to really not see the ball, but he checks to see what Bill's doing here. And, you know, Bill's decided he's going to go back and get it. So that's Brian's cue not to back up. And I see this a lot. I see where, you know, players will hit a very good no man's land shot, lob here, and then they'll back up. Well, what does Brian do? Brian comes on in, and now we've got what I think is the ideal court position here for the two players that have just lobbed, meaning that Brian, who is directly in front of the ball, he's not as Phil as Phil is diagonal from the ball. Since Brian's right there with, with the ball in front of him, he's the player that's going to be up the closest, and, you know, the chances are, are you know, what, 90% that the opponent's going to lob this back. Well, whoever's got the overhead in the middle, which is this case, is, is going to be Phil. He really is the one who's going to handle every overhead from probably here all the way over because we'd much rather have Phil handle the overhead here as opposed to Brian having to deal with that high backhand, which is tough. Um, not, not meaning that Brian couldn't run a run around it but in this case you always want the guy who's got the overhead in the middle to really take charge and and, and unless the lob is is truly back on this side you know it's going to be it's going to be Phil's. Uh, Bill really hits a great a great lob that you know actually it lands a little shorter than I than I thought originally it lands right about on top of if not inside the service line um, certainly could have been that's a high lob, and uh, I'm, I'm telling you, this time of year down there at, uh, at Mission Hills, uh, it is super bright out there. Uh, I know the sun is back on, on this side. You can see it because of the shadows. But I think that Phil's done a nice job here um, in terms of letting it bounce up 
And I think he configured that both guys are staying back, and he plays an approach overhead, all right? Uh, you know, he's not thinking, hey, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and ESPN this thing away from a, for a winner. He's simply getting himself back far enough behind it to where now as he hits it, he can move back in, reclaim his net position, and, uh, and now he's going to volley back to, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not dissing Bill here, but I think the strategy is, is that um, these guys, Brian and, and Phil, are thinking, you know what, we'd, we, we'd probably rather keep it away from Paul than, you know, take our chances with, uh, with Bill. So, so Bill actually, you know, I'm not 100% on this shot going up the line. Um, Brian plays a good, a good volley. Here's, here's where I kind of have my one little uh, picky thing on court positioning with, uh, with, with uh, Paul. And I think, you know, Paul is probably looking for that opportunity uh, for Bill to play a shot that he can move in on. And these two guys have played so much doubles together. I really think that Paul ought to be able to anticipate that Bill is going to do what he does here, which is to roll it, roll it down low, and and you can see where, where Phil is here. If if Paul had anticipated this shot or just almost um, as the volley right here was going back, he could probably measure, all right, it's going to Bill's backhand. As Paul, I would have liked to have seen him to start to move in and let Bill know that he's going to be in a good position here if Bill wants to go ahead and uh, and roll this thing cross court. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to stop it right here. And the question is, what's the right shot? You know, what shot do you think Bill ought to play in this situation? And uh, right below the video in the comment section, let us know. All right, have fun with us and have a great day out there today. Mm-hmm.